Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim from Pitsco Education and today's RoboBench, I wanna go ahead and cover exactly what you need to do to be able to swap out the gearboxes on your Tetrix Tornado motor. So I've got several things in front of me here. I've got a Tornado motor with the default gearbox on it. I've got uh, examples of the replacement gearboxes in two formats. I'll show you exactly how they come in the packages and then also those out of the package. I have a standard motor mount that will show how that actually goes into the mount. And then I've got the tools that I need. Uh, I only need one of these screwdrivers, but I'm going to show you a couple examples that you might want to use. And then I've got my motor spec sheet because uh, as part of this, I want to also go over the specs that are going to change when you actually um, change the motor uh, gearbox on the motors itself. So if that all sounds good to you. We're going to ahead and get right into it. So let's go ahead and start with the spec sheet. Now let's start by uh, letting you know where you can find this. This is available in two places on the website. I printed it out, but it's available in digital format. If you go to the product page for the Tornado motor, at the bottom under resources, you find this spec sheet. Uh, you can also go to the product page for the individual gearboxes and find this spec sheet. But basically, the outside of the, or the outward characteristics of the motor body itself, the general characteristics of the motor is not going to change. So all of those are going to be the same. The diameter of the, the, the barrel itself, the output shaft diameter, the, the, that it's a D shaft, that part is all the same. But when you get down to the, uh, the output characteristics, in other words, the RPM, the torque, the uh, encoder counts, those values are going to change. So you need to know what those are. Uh, not only mechanically, so it's going to how it's going to impact your your robot, but or your motor, but also when you start to program, if you use the encoders and things like that, you need to be aware of what those values are. So I printed it out so I can make sure I, I tell you exactly what they are. So um, let's start with the default characteristics of the standard 60 to 1 gearbox. RPM. Uh, start with that. 100, uh, very simple, uh, 100 RPM uh, for the, uh, the actual 60 to 1 gearbox. Torque, very torquey, 700 ounce inches of torque for the standard configuration of the 60 to 1. Encoder counts, 1,440 counts for every full revolution of the, the output shaft. So those are the default specs of the default Tornado motor. It's where you're starting from. When you change the gearbox itself and go down in gear ratio, those are going to change. So let's start with the 40 to 1 uh, because that's the, the first step down in ratio. 40 to 1, output um, the, uh, start with the RPM. That's what we started with before. So uh, you're gonna, RPM is going to go up from uh, the 100 count for the 60 to 1, move to 40 to 1, it's going to go up to 150. The stall torque, 700 for default. Now we're moving down to 466. Torque is going to go down. Remember, RPM goes up, torque goes down. Encoder counts. This is like the uh, torque. The uh, gear ratio goes down, so the encoder counts go down. So going from 1440 to 960 for every full rotation of that output shaft. Again, those are the changes you need to be aware of, uh, especially when you start programming with those encoder counts. 20 to 1, we've reduced it again. So again, RPM, that goes up and everything else goes down. So from the RPM of 100, 20 to 1, we're going to move up to 300 RPM, three times the RPM. Torque is going to go down the same uh, ratio, 3 to 1. So. Um, instead of moving from 700 default there, we're going to be 233 ounce inches of torque for the uh, 20 to 1 gearbox. And in, finally, encoder counts, that's going to go down as well. So 1440, we're moving down to 480 counts for every full rotation of the output shaft. So those are important figures to, to remember. Uh, when you begin, again, to actually think about how this is going to affect your outward characteristics or behavior of the motor on your robot or when you begin to program that. Again, those are available online, digital format, or you can do like I did and you can print them out. So that's important to remember. Now, I also wanted to show you um, how these come in the packages because they, they come packaged with the mounting screws that you need. 
It's important that when you uh, open those up, you don't lose those screws because they're small. So again, we've got 40 to one, we've got 20 to one. And let me show you what those actual screws look like because they, again, are small. So you can see that they are fairly tiny when you get and they can be easily overlooked. Sometimes they're in the motor, it's the mount itself. So you might pick that up by itself and think, well, I don't see the screws turn them over like that, and then all of a sudden, there they are. So again, those are easy to lose. You need to make sure you, you keep track of those when you actually take them out of the package. The other thing I wanna talk about for a minute is the, the screwdriver. Again, these are small screws. You don't wanna strip them out, so it's important to use the proper size Phillips head screwdriver. It is a Phillips head. You basically, you need to remember it's a Phillips head number one. The default two-in-one screwdriver that comes in the Tetrix set will work just fine, but the main thing you want to remember is you want to look at the tip of your screwdriver. If you start with a damaged tip on your screwdriver, you're more likely to damage those screws, so that's very important. That's one of the reasons why I like to use, personally myself, one of these screwdrivers uh, with the replaceable uh, tip. If I've, I've got a damaged tip, I can replace that easily, and that way I make sure that I don't damage my screws. They come in several different sizes, uh, whatever you're, uh, you find convenient. I like this size because it fits my larger hand, but you also have this smaller size that's ratcheting. Again, the important part is the tip itself, not the body of the screwdriver, but you want to make sure that it's not damaged so you don't damage your screws. So uh, that being said, I think I've got everything I need here. I'm going to get some, what I don't need out of the way, and we're going to go ahead and swap those boxes. Okay, so I've gotten rid of all the extra stuff I don't need. I want to start by showing you that this is the default motor and obviously it fits into the motor mount just like that. So I want to make sure that we have a common starting point. When we finish, it's going to end up doing the same thing. I'm going to set that aside for a moment. I'm only going to replace one of these because the process is exactly the same. If you, if you can do one of these, um, it's going to work the same process for either way. There, there is digital instructions that you can download, just like the spec sheet that will actually detail in a four simple four step process this. Um, but it, we want to go ahead and show you that at the same time. So the first thing that you have to do, step number one, is actually remove the default gearboxes. Three small screws located in the face of the, the gearbox. Get your Phillips head screwdriver. Go ahead and it's simply, it's a matter of removing those screws. Um, basically, I like to make sure that I loosen each one until it, it is seemingly free from the body of the, the motor itself. And you'll know that they are by simply trying to pull them out a little bit. And they will come out like that if they are free. So you remove all three of those. And I don't take them all the way out just because it's a little bit easier to keep track of them um, that way if I keep them with the body of the motor. I have all three loose, and you see that? So you can just take it by the shaft and it will simply lift off the body of the motor. The 40 to one and 60 to one are the same height or depth, so those look very close. But if you look at this 20 to one, if you side by side there, you'll see there is a depth difference between the two. So that's another visual cue that you can use to tell whether or not you've got uh, which gearbox on your motor mount. Now before I go ahead and put it on, I want to make sure that we point out some things on the body of the motor itself. Very important, there are some alignment pins that are uh, on the, the, motor mount, the body of the motor. Those are going to be important to make sure that you have the mount or the gearbox aligned correctly when you put the, the new one on the, the motor body itself. So uh, make sure that you recognize that those are there. The other thing is the, the screw pattern. There are um, three small screws, again, that are going to be uh, used. I'm going to go ahead and use the 20 to 1 just so that you can uh, see how that works. And again, I'm going to make sure that the screws don't fall out because they are in there. But if you look, and I just dropped one, um, the alignment pins are going to be just to, there's a, a very only two alignment holes. They're going to look, uh, match up to the alignment pins. So when you set those down, just like that, you'll find a place as you begin to slowly rotate that just a little bit, where it just kind of sets that right down in. You'll know that it's seated properly when it does that. Put the screw that fell in back out, and you'll see that 
I'm going to hold this up just so you can see just for a moment. The screw holes for the mounting uh, screws have a little a bit of a, a indentation. Um, they're not threaded all the way out, so that's where you want to make sure that you put the mounting screws. Goes right down in there, and then it's just simply a matter of just like opposite of the removal. I'm just going to go ahead and tighten those down. And once you have every each one started, then you can go down until it's snug. Again, just like you, when you change a tire on your car, you don't want to tighten any one side too tight. You want to kind of go around in a pattern so that you make sure everything is snug down. Once everything is snug, then you can go back and make sure everything's tight. Again, you don't want to make over tighten these. Um, they just need to be snug. You don't want them to come out, but you don't want to strip the thread out either. Once you have them mounted, the reason that you don't need to have those super tight is because when you put this in the mount, the mount is on the, on the, the gearbox shell or the body of the shell. So there's no stress on holding this body to the gearhead. Um, it's just simply the alignment pins make sure that there's no torque there. So that takes care of that. You just need to make sure that there's, they're down snug. So again, once you do that, you see that the replacement head uh, fits exactly the same way in the motor mount, and you have just switched out the gearbox on your uh, Torquedo motor. So instead of 60 to 1, now I have a 20 to 1 gearbox on this motor. Again, output characteristics going to change. Higher RPM, lower torque, lower encoder count. So there you go. I hope that gives you the confidence that you need to be able to go ahead and use these new gearboxes on your Torquedo motors inspires you to build different uh, applications and uh, different types of robots. So like we always say, have fun, build some robots, come back and see us.